Jesus said, feed my sheep. Amen. Guys, it wasn't until Thursday morning that I uh, really received from the Lord what it was that I was going to share this morning. I was kind of, you know, <laughs> putting the pressure on the Lord saying, Lord, uh, it's Thursday. The breakfast is Saturday morning. Can we talk? <laughs> I need a word here. <laughs> and Thursday morning as I was uh, getting out of bed, you know sometimes when you get out of bed and you're kind of laying there, kind of half asleep, half awake, and you always want to start the Lord, start the day off with the Lord. You know, sometimes you start off the day and you, and you just think, oh, good Lord, it's morning. And other days you just start off the you know, uh, day saying, good morning, uh, you know, Lord, <laughs> it's morning. So this is one of those days and I started off right and, and the Lord just spoke to me and said, you're going to be talking to a bunch of Peters. <laughs> Don't take it personal, but you are. And so am I. That Saturday morning. And I want you to share with them the hope that they can have with Peter's example of how I reinstated him. He fell. Satan sifted him as wheat. But that's okay. He fell in his area of greatest strength, his courage. He had the courage to take on the Roman army. He had the courage to do all of these things that he did, yet he didn't have the courage to stand up to a little girl who was asking him if he knew me. And I want you to tell them that Saturday morning. I want you to tell them that no matter how badly they've messed up, no matter how hard they've fallen, I will lift them up. No matter how many times they've denied me, I'll reinstate them. I'll reaffirm them because I love them. No matter how much they think that God could never use me, I will use them. I know people will think it's a foolish choice for me to choose them and use them, but I will because that's who I am and that's how I am. I believe that in the days that lie ahead, it's going to get worse. Satan is going to turn up the heat, as it were. Because, see, if he can smite the shepherd, he can scatter the sheep. Who's the shepherd? You? Husband? Father? Do you think he's succeeded here too far? Absolutely. See, if he can get you and sift you, he'll destroy you. He'll destroy your marriage. He'll destroy your family. He'll destroy your kids. And if he does that, there's no way that you'll be serving the Lord. See, he wants to keep you out of God's service. He wants you to be another notch in his belt. He wants to sift you as we, he wants to destroy you, but the Lord is praying for you and the Lord will be there for you. And even if you fall and you fail, God can still use you. He's not just the God of second chances. He's the God of endless chances. Is he not? Let's close this way, guys. I, I see guys in front of me who I believe God wants to use in marvelous and even miraculous ways. And perhaps you're thinking, you know, I, God can't use me. God can't choose me. Look at Peter. If God can use Peter, if God could still choose and use Peter, he can still choose and use you. Yeah, but I messed up bad. So did Peter. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I mean, this is really bad. And it's not just Peter. You know, Peter's in good company. Have you read some about some of these guys? That's why I know the Bible had to be inspired by God, because men would have never written about this. I would have never put, if it, if it were me, I would have never written about this. I would have really shed myself in a much more favorable light if I were Peter. <laughs> I really would have. I would have just said, you know, when it came to the, the garden, I wouldn't have said, you know, that I cut off, uh, you know, Jesus's, or that Malchus's ear, and Jesus rebuked me and had to heal the ear, I would have just said, I was there and I stood by Jesus. That's how I would have said it. <laughs> Luke's gospel would have read very differently. But why are we given such graphic details about these guys' failures? It's not to show us how bad they are, it's to show us how good he is. And if you look at the common denominator in the men that God uses, without exception, 
they have a pretty checkered past. They have a very unimpressive resume if they even have one. I mean, if you've never read it, that you should get your hands on a book called Harvest. It's about these Calvary Chapel pastors before they came to Christ and even planted churches and now pastor what uh, are called mega churches. These guys were losers, man. They were losers. They made Peter look good. These guys were terrible. I would have never, who would have thunk that God could use a wretch like somebody like that? I mean, it, Raul Reese, he was going to kill his wife and his kids with a machete. Steve Mays, these guys were evil guys. And now God's using them in powerful ways. I mean, it's just it's amazing to me. And we all have our own story, don't we? We can all write our own book. I'm looking around, some of you guys, I'm thinking, oh, what a, what a group of guys. <laughs> There's nothing outwardly. I mean, you guys look great. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> I don't know why. Did your wife see what you were wearing before you walked out the door? But um, here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem. We think that God cannot do anything with us, in us, through us, because of us. And nothing can be further from the truth. And if you think that, Satan has sifted you. Satan has taken you out. He goes on to the next one. Get back in the game. Amen. Get back in the game. Let today be a reference point. Let this surrounding, this awesome, wonderful breakfast. And how about that food, by the way, guys? Thank you so much, by the way. I mean, let this be a reference point for you. Man, there's hope for me. I'm not talking about pull yourself up by the bootstraps, roll up your arm sleeves, take up the banner, hard-work Christian soldiers marching. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about coming to the place where you realize that it's not me. It's him doesn't matter how bad I've been. It only matters how good he is. Let him be God in your life and let him use your life. If need be, let him reinstate you in life so that he can use you. Let Peter be the example. If God, He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, right? Amen. I mean, look at, look at guys like, Abraham, a liar. He was a pathological liar. Uh, you know, Noah was a drunk. Uh, you know, Lot was a, I mean, I won't even get into Lot. I mean, I wouldn't have saved Lot. I would have just, I would have torched him. Uh, there and, uh, which is why, it's not very loving, is it? But plant <laughs> dude, I mean, what? Anyway, don't give me a start. I mean, and, it, and it's not just there. Gideon was, was a, I mean, he was, Here's a guy, how about Jonah, running from God? Yeah. And God still uses these guys. Yeah. I mean, you can just go one after the other from Genesis all the way through the pages of Scripture, and you'll see guy after guy, like Peter, who are examples to us of how good God is to us. Father, I want to ask you that you would take these things that we've seen in your word and this example that we've seen and how you can take someone like Peter and do what you did. I ask, Lord, that you'll, by the Holy Spirit, minister this truth about who you are to us as men. That we would come to that place where we're at the end of ourselves realizing that in and of ourselves there's no way that we would humble ourselves so that you could lift us up. Lord, forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for our self-sufficiency, our self-confidence, our self-reliance. Forgive us for the way we try to, in our own strength, like Peter, live the Christian life as men. I pray, Lord, that you would break us and humble us so that you can rebuild us and reinstate us. 
in Jesus' name.